They are the defenders of Rome, protectors of the Emperor, Praetorians. Hello number ones, welcome back to my channel, this is the Metatron speaking and a while ago, to be specific on the 13th of March, I made a video about the Roman Centurions. Link in the description below of course. Now the reason why I chose to speak about them in the first place is because, well, Roman Centurions are very famous. Everybody has heard of them and I wanted to expand and give some further information on that topic. But today we're going to speak about the Praetorians. Because, of course, many people have heard of them, but the real question is, who were the Praetorians? How much did they differ from a regular soldier or milites in the legion? The Praetorians were hand-picked veterans of the Roman army. They had a very, very important job to do, providing close protection and security to the Emperor, accompanying him on active campaign. But the Praetorians weren't only the bodyguards of the Emperor, they also served as secret police protecting the civic administration and rule of law imposed by the Senate and subsequently by the Emperor in Imperial times. So from this we can already see that the title or designation was already in use during the Roman Republic or Respublica Romana. And as a matter of fact, the guards of Roman generals also, since the rise to prominence of the Scipio family in 273 BC were called Praetorians. Res Publica. Okay, so the title was already in use, but at the time there was no permanent guard. It's just that some officers decided to surround themselves with guards, giving birth to the Praetorian cohort. In other words, they were a last standing resort. Consuls, on the other hand, were not protected by Praetorians, but they were protected by the Lictors. Side note! So who were the Lictors? Well, the Lictors were the bodyguards of the Roman magistrates, and they were used since the times of the Kingdom of Rome, allegedly since the very time of the first King of Rome. They were normally recruited from either the plebs, so we're talking about the general Roman non-patrician population, the citizens, or they could be former centurions. In any case, they would not be military. Now, even if they were not military, they still had some legal power, meaning that if ordered to do so by their magistrate, they could arrest and even punish Roman citizens. Back to the Praetorians. Imperium. The Praetorians constituted a close guard and military reserve of the Emperor. The guard was eventually moved and brought from the Italian barracks to Rome itself, having the main Praetorian barracks, the Castra Praetoria, built just outside of Rome. And one of the cohorts held daily guard of the Imperial Palace. Serving close to the Emperor, Praetorians had several advantages. Well, first of all, they were the only ones allowed to bear arms within the Promerium, namely Rome's religious boundaries around the city. Also, their mandatory service went from, was about lasted 12 years instead of the regular 16 years of normal standard legionaries or soldiers serving in the legion. And their pay was higher, and under Emperor Nero it became significantly higher, as much as three and a half times higher than that of regular soldiers. They would also receive extra payment, which was called donatium, during special occasions such as imperial birthdays and many others. Praetorians were feared and dreaded by the Roman Senate and the population. In fact, we could say that they didn't have any shred of sympathy 
from the people of Rome. Fun fact! Praetorians did not wear their armour inside the city. They wore instead a formal toga. And this was done for two reasons. First of all, not in order not to alienate the population. But secondly, it was to respect civil republican traditions. Right. Now, there were mainly two different kinds of Praetorians, to simplify it a little bit, infantry and cavalry. Normally, members of Praetorian cavalry had to have served at least five years in regular infantry before being able to become Praetorian cavalry. Now, before the reform of Septimus Severus, only Praetorians would only be recruited from either Italy, Spain, Macedonia or Noricum which is modern-day Austria. But after the reform, other people were allowed within the Praetorian Guard, although still in the second century, 89% of Praetorians were Italians. And at the very beginning of the Guard, not only they had to be Italian, but they could only come from central Italy, namely from Etruria, Umbria and Latium, according to Tacitus. In order to be a standard legionary, you had to be within 18 to 23 years of age, whereas to be a Praetorian, you could be recruited if you were from 15 to 32 years of age. You had to have good physical condition, you had to be governed by good moral character, and you had to come from a respectable family and possess a letter of recommendation from someone of authority. The supreme commander of the Praetorians was a Praetorian prefect, Praefectus Praetorio. All right, number once. Thank you very much for watching, as always. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Uh, I certainly enjoyed making it. Of course, talking about the Roman Empire and the Romans in general is one of my favorite topics, but that doesn't mean that we'll only talk about the Romans. As a matter of fact, lately, as you know, I've been speaking about the Egyptian, I've been speaking about the Romans, I've been speaking about the Japanese. I'm trying to widen and diversify my content as much as I can in order to uh, make everybody happy, basically. And of course, some of you are gamers, you asked me to play Dark Souls 3, and I did yesterday. And today's video is rather short, I understand that, and that's because making these historical videos does take longer than other kinds of videos. But, uh, you know, considering the fact that now we are, we are approaching the Easter holiday, I should be able to make longer videos, even if they are historical. Alright, thank you very much for watching as always, and please remember to subscribe to my channel, comment below, share this video and like it if you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching, and remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Walete!